In this presentation, I'm going to go over the central dogma of molecular biology, which we covered in Chapter 12. So we're going to be taking a strand of DNA, and we will run it through transcription first to create an mRNA molecule. And then that mRNA molecule, we will run it through translation in order to put amino acids together to create a polypeptide. And then remember, polypeptides can fold or interact with other polypeptides in order to create functional proteins. And proteins have very diverse functions. For example, um, the protein hemoglobin transports oxygen to all of our cells. We have proteins in our hair that give it a color. Um, so proteins are able to do pretty much anything, give us all of our traits and characteristics. So here we have a DNA molecule up at the top, and it's a double-stranded DNA molecule. So you'll notice that the top strand goes from 3' prime to 5', prime, and the bottom strand goes from 5' prime to 3'. Prime. We are going to take this DNA molecule, and we're going to run it through transcription. So this is a process where the DNA molecule is used to create the mRNA molecule. So DNA, since it's double-stranded, um, we don't use both of those strands in order to do transcription. One of the strands is called the template strand. And to figure out what the template strand is, mRNA is always made starting at the 5' prime going towards the 3' prime because that is how the enzyme RNA polymerase works. It always goes 5 to 3. So because our mRNA has to be 5 to 3, the DNA that we use as the template has to be anti-parallel or opposite. So we will use the DNA strand that goes 3 to 5. In this example, it's going to be the top DNA strand. So we're going to create our mRNA using complementary base pairing. And it's going to be running from 5 prime to 3 prime. So you'll notice in our DNA molecule at the very top, we have G that will pair up against C on our mRNA. A in our DNA will pair up across from U. T is across from A, and then the Cs will be across from the Gs in our mRNA. So the really important part, or the biggest mistake I see in this transcription um, sequence that happens first, taking our DNA, creating an mRNA, is that people forget to use the uracil. So remember, DNA has thymine along with the adenine, guanosine, and cytosine. RNA has uracil along with the adenine, guanine, and cytosine. So this is probably the most biggest mistake that I see during transcription. Um, other than that, it's pretty easy. You take your DNA going from 3 to 5, to create your mRNA, which will be going from 5 to 3. So they're, again, anti-parallel to each other. And then put your cell in when you're doing that complementary base pairing. Once you have your mRNA molecule created, you will then want to find something called a start codon. So our mRNA molecule we group three nucleotides together, three of those letters together, into a codon. And a start codon, this is where it's going to tell the ribosome to actually start the translation, to start putting amino acids together. So the start codon, for the most part, is going to be AUG. And I have it highlighted in the orange circle, and it says codon, because remember it's three letters, so it's going to be AUG. Then once we find the start codon, and there can be additional nucleotides in front of the start codon, those we can just ignore because we always have to start with the start codon. Now we can go through the translation process. The translation process is a little bit more complicated. Um, there's going to be another molecule called a tRNA that comes into play before we can start to put our amino acids together to make our protein. All right, so what we have to do first is we highlighted our codon on our mRNA. We then need a tRNA molecule, and the T stands for transfer. So transfer RNA molecule 
It's just meant as an intermediate to help read the mRNA and to bring in the correct amino acid to make our polypeptide. So on our tRNA molecules, which I have represented with the little um, two blue triangles, now at the bottom, on that tRNA, there is a three sequence nucleotide sequence called the anticodon. So the anticodon is going to be complementary to our codon. So in this case, if our codon is AUG, the start codon, our anticodon on the tRNA is going to be UAC. So remember, we're making RNA, so we're still going to have uracil. And then A's and U's pair up, G's and C's will pair up with each other. OK, so now we have our first tRNA molecule with the anticodon. In order to find out which amino acid the tRNA is actually bringing in, or what it's being put first, as we go back to our codon up on our mRNA molecule, the AUG highlighted in the orange circle, and we're going to be using a genetic chart in order to decode our codons. So what happens is that on, if you see on the left-hand side of the cart, chart, sorry, it says first letter. So this is the first letter in your codon. So there's the four possible choices, U, C, A, G. We have A. So we're going to highlight across in the row that has codons that start with A. So if you look in that red box that was just drawn, all of those codons start with A's going across. Then you go to the top of the chart, and again it says second letter, and it has U, C, A, G, our four possible choices. We have a U in our codon. So we highlight all the U's. So if you go down, now we have a box that was drawn where we have four possible codons that start with AU. And we, specifically, have AUG. AUG codes for this amino acid, MET, and that is our start amino acid. So we're going to take that MET and we're going to put it on the bottom of our tRNA molecule. So tRNA on one side has an anticodon, the other side's carrying the amino acid that we want. So we're going to go to our next codon. Okay, well first, this is the start of our polypeptide. So we go to our next codon, which is UCC. So we bring in our next tRNA molecule that has the anticodon AGG, because they're complementary to each other. And then to figure out which amino acid is coming in next into the second position, we go back up to our codon, which is UCC. Go to the chart. Our first letter, if we look on the left, is U. So we have all the possible codons that start with a U. Our second letter is a C. So we get down to a box where everything's UC. And then specifically, we have UCC. And that codes for serine, so the S-E-R. This is our second amino acid. So we'll put it down in our polypeptide line. So right now we have a polypeptide that has two amino acids hooked together. So you just continue this onto your next codon. So we'll just do the next two codons. The next two amino tRNAs come in with their anticodons. You use the chart using your codons to figure out what amino acids are coming in next. Okay. And then we get to our last codon in our mRNA molecule. And here it's the UAA. This is a special codon. There are three codons in our mRNA that will code for stop. So we have to know when to stop making our polypeptide. Because we had a start, now we have to have a stop. So if we look, the first letter is U in our codon. The second letter was an A. Specifically, we had UAA, which has stop next to it. There's another stop underneath that, UAG, and then one right to the right 
UGA, which is also stop. So there's three possible stop codons on our chart. So when you get to a stop codon, there's no amino acid that goes there. It's just you're stopping your creation of the polypeptide right here. Okay, so I hope this helps a little bit with how we can take a DNA molecule and you can take it through transcription to make your mRNA molecule. Then that mRNA molecule goes into the ribosome and that's where trans translation occurs. And then your tRNAs come into the ribosome, the codons match up with the anticodons, and then your tRNA is holding the amino acid. Those amino acids are hooked together to make a polypeptide. Polypeptide can form with other polypeptides and will fold into their 3D shapes to make a functional protein.